so so now right what i want to do is i want to kind of move on to a kl transform now okay what is called a karunen low f transform because until now whatever we have done is all kind of data independent right we did dft we did dct we did wht we can go on but each one of them right now you know right uh, you know the drill so karunen low f right uh, is uh, low f transform is the one that is actually a data dependent transform svd is another okay so i think right uh, these are the these are the two things that we want to do at least i want to start today this uh, karunen low f transform it's also called klt it is not a it is not a canadian lucas tracker Another another one that is called referred to as KLT is really a Kennedy Lucas tracker. This is KL transform. Okay, it goes by different names. One is a principal components analysis, principal components analysis, and uh, it also goes by the name Hotelling transform. I think it is a double L. Okay, Hotelling transform. Okay, goes under all these names. now this one right as opposed to the earlier ones that we had till now this is a data dependent transform so which basically means that you know we do not know a priori what what is the basis and so on okay sometimes of course you know when you have an equivalence like there is a data independent transform which becomes a klt then maybe a priori you know the basis but unless you look at the data might you won't even know what kind of a basis you have and therefore and all the separability and already need not automatically happen it depends upon whether whether your data structure has that or not therefore right there are no fast implementations for this generally right there are no fast implementations and uh, also the fact that because because you need to know the basis right it is not like uh, you know it's not like a data independent case therefore it people seldom use it for use it for real coding but there are some 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 very nice applications of this which um, uh, which i will show okay but as far as coding is concerned people don't really use it but as i said earlier a data dependent transform is more like a more like a benchmark right something something that can be done in an optimal way okay if you knew something about the data and uh, then right you can look at a data independent transform and try to see how close it comes right or how far away is it you know from uh, or whether something can be called a kl transform right even one wants to do that right like we said a dft okay sometimes for certain matrices becomes the kl transform and so on So scale transform, right? Really hinges on this. Uh, this is something okay that we have already seen before, and I have said before. Okay, this is uh, this is that uh, this is the uh, no. This is based on the spectral theorem for for say no normal matrices. So this comes from based on the spectral theorem for for normal matrices. I've kind of mentioned it earlier for normal matrices. it according to which which says it says that if a is normal okay, normal which means you know in our in our parallel i mean in normal means a r may not in a r b shin a right that's what we said it is as a kind of normal matrix then it can be diagonalized we are not going to going into the proof of this we just take the statement on its as it is can be diagonalized or it, uh, it can be unitarily diagonalized that is you can you can find out a unitary transform let's say some p then p a p hermitian which will diagonalize a okay. and then the other the nice thing about this you know why why is this why is this a powerful thing because of the fact that it gives you it gives you gives you a basis right consisting of you know orthonormal eigen vectors it consists of orthonormal eigen vectors right that is where that is where okay this kind of strength lies So now, what this actually means for us, right? So this, so this orthonormal eigen vectors, eigen values, and all that. Right? Why, why they are so very important? Okay, when it comes to a statistical property, right? So for that, let's just take a take a small sort of a diagram. Right? Suppose, suppose, let's say, suppose, uh, suppose you know, I have. Um, okay, let me just draw an imaginary line here. And suppose, you know, somebody right gives me, gives me, gives me, uh, no, gives me uh, some sort of data points, such that you know they are. they are they are here so for example some x i get some y you know so so, so they kind of right they are you know around this you know somewhat more like that okay some some sort of an you know ellipsoidal 
So, it is like you know spread around a line ok of course, you know you can have some noise and all that, but then it is kind of spread around, around a line ok. Now, when you see a data like this and suppose you go to your standard basis right, which is your x and then this is your y ok. One thing ok, which you kind of see notice is that as x increases y seems to increase right in you know generally y is increasing as x is increasing, as x decreases y is also decreasing right. So, you see a correlation, it is a strong correlation in the sense that when x is increasing y is automatically increasing y is also increasing and x is decreasing, y is also decreasing, right. So, so what this actually means is that I mean if I, so, uh, so, so one way to sort of see is that you know there is a strong correlation. The other way to see it is that if you look at the spread of this variable, I mean if you look at the way or the spread of this data, right or whatever you call the variance of this data, right. So, the variance seems to be like and you know, it is very well aligned, right along, along this axis. Okay, there you know, looks like the maximum spread right in this data is, is occurring occurring along that axis and there is of course, another axis which is orthogonal to this along which again it some some kind of a spread is going on correct. You see that, that there is a maximum variance in this direction there is some sort of a variance right in this direction. So, if, so, 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 the point is right if you if you try to if you try to try to see right. So, it looks like it look, looks like you know if I want to right, instead of sending both x and y see for example, I mean here right I mean if I if I have to you know if I, if I have to send a point send an information right about about a point suppose I send send only its x coordinate right then what it means is in the standard basis it means that right so much so for this point right the y is so much right and the, and the entire thing I will be ignoring right whereas whereas if I kind of look at the look at this axis where there is maximum variance right if I if I see this point and, and suppose I find out what is its component right. So, so, so it has a component along this axis which is that much and then along the orthogonal axis the component is much, much more smaller right. So, so it looks like, so it looks like you know if I were to capture the spread I mean if I have some notion about how this data is spread out right and uh, and you know and if I can find this. So, what I need is an orientation of these axis of course, I again, again, again need this orthonormal axis x and y are again I mean, right orthogonal, but then the thing is in the you know in that standard basis if I try to express this data then I am not able to express it you know in a sort of a uh, in a sort of a neat way right. What would be nicer is in some way if I, if I could get a sense for how this how this uh, how this data distribution is right which means that I need several points ok. This I cannot do with one example and all. If there is a distribution of data available right. Uh, okay, and uh, based upon that, right? If I can make some assessment about what the variances are, in the sense that you know, in which in which is the directions, right? Are the uh, no, uh, no, you know is uh, is the is the spread of the data, directions is the spread of the data. If I can get a sense of these, right? Then what I can do is I can actually, I can then ask, right? Uh, can I sort of you know can I sort of say change the basis now? instead of using my standard basis which is like you know x and y instead of that can I kind of you know change my basis such that right along along the directions of maximum variance I will try to use them as a basis and those are the eigenvectors right. The eigenvectors are the ones right along which along which you have this uh, you have you have the you have the maximum spread of the data right. So, so all of this boils down to which is why uh, you know which is why all through right whenever whenever you know we did a diagonalization we were always looking at eigenvectors eigenvalues eigenvectors eigenvalues and so on. Now, what happens is right because because this is a covariance right. So, what happens suppose let us say you know suppose for example, somebody you know gives me faces let us say you know human faces right. Now, imagine that imagine that I have a human face and uh, you know suppose I stack it up as, a, as you know one sort of one sort of a vector. Now, you know if you give me several such examples ok. Suppose let us say you know these days it is so easily available right. So, let us say each each phase is n dimensional. So, I just stack it up as one vector. And suppose I have let us say n cross p where let us say p is much higher than n you know p is like whatever 10,000, 20,000, 1 million maybe right? that many examples I have. Now, if you now, now if you call this as your matrix x ok wherein all my examples are there. So, all this I need I mean right without which I cannot. So, the KLT ok that is why it requires a, requires a lot of data and all right because you need to understand what is what, what is the kind of kind of data right that you are actually looking at. You need to have an idea about what is what is the what is the right what kind of correlation exists and so on. And therefore, right, if you try to if you try to estimate r hat because generally right, nobody gives you an analytical r. Typically for the world examples right we do not have an analytical r right unless of course, you model it such like for example, that first order you could impose a model, but then if you have enough examples you could even try learning the covariance right. So, what you do you do something like you know expectation we just assume that I make it all 0 mean right. Then what I can do is I mean I can simply do a summation uh, x i x i transpose 
at i running from 1 to p correct now what this actually means is that you know so so what this will mean is that i'll have an r hat which is actually n cross n correct now in this n cross n matrix right if i try to see what uh, what kind of a correlation exists and suppose i can transform it to to a, to a kind of right a different basis wherein wherein so it's like saying that saying that suppose i go from r right suppose i have an r and suppose i do an r dash suppose i go from r to r dash by doing some kind of a transformation where in r dash right i suddenly see that you know this kind of a decorrelation is going decorrelation happens like here right with respect to xy i see a, it's a lot of correlation but suddenly right when i transform my axis okay suddenly find that you know this kind of a correlation almost right i mean if it can if it can go down to zero it's very good but then at least right if there is a lot of decorrelation going on i would like that right instead of going with some physical correlated data right that is the idea behind actually behind the pca it's called principal components because which are all principal means which are all the significant eigen vectors principal components the equivalent uh, no equivalently what it means is which are the significant eigen vectors and you basically decide significance by looking at the eigen values right so those eigen vectors that have a that have a large eigen value will be the ones okay which will, which will which will be significant okay so right that that is the idea okay so now uh, so all this means that you need to have access to data right you need to be able to learn all this unless you of course no r a priori analytically most likely you don't have an analytical r therefore you'll have to estimate r which means you should have a lot of examples but once you have all of that then you can actually start to kind of write uh, you know think about think about right what kind of approximations can i make now now if you go back to your dft dct and all and suppose i had a had a sequence let's say u okay i gave you a sequence u and suppose i said you know instead of using all the uh, all the eigen vectors of in that fourier basis okay suppose you had a fourier right there you had no you had some five star right which was whose columns are are the basis correct now if you choose to use only only a few of them correct see right typically uh, typically this is like this is like n cross n okay now uh, now uh, right if you, if you if you choose only let's say right uh, p of these columns not all n and then suppose you ask uh, what will be the what will be the error that i will incur then in general right there is no answer okay there is no answer in general that i can give because it depends on what what that u is for each u right you can get some error and, and there are no kind of general statements right that, that i can make that you know you will you will incur an error within this range and all right i do not know okay such statements i can't even make because it's all data independent now with respect to kl transform this is nice thing is that if you can if you can if you can identify what those eigen vectors are which you can if you have this covariance matrix then what you can do is you know, if i now say that from these eigen so think of this as an eigen basis right so so they are again orthonormal vectors now if you try to just pick a few of them and suppose i ask right what what will happen if i try to reconstruct with only some of them right then then uh, you know then you can have have a notion about how well you will do okay that means right in general you can claim that you know uh, you can try you can claim that if some example comes from that class of course you know provided it comes from that class for example for face right if i have computed the covariance matrix and suppose i just use some of the eigen vectors which are significant but leave some out can suppose i ask how much of an error am i likely to make on the average then what you can say is suppose i give you a new face image i can a priori tell how well i'll do okay this you can't do with your with your say, data independent kind of transform right so so this is the power that the scale transform right brings in so in a sense you get you get to know how well you will do right in general provided the data sam samples come from that class okay if it is a different class then of course you will have a different covariance you will have a different set of eigen vectors again the same argument holds okay now in order to do this right what we okay let me just go one step forward okay and you know so the point is right so when you look at uh, uh, this one a distribution talk about correlation decorrelation and all right so it all has to do with a covariance matrix right r is a covariance matrix okay which is what kind of see captures what kind of a correlation you have right across across these elements of x now this covariance matrix right r we know that you uh, know you know if even if you take a kind of a kind of you know a complex case then we know that r is equal to r r this an hermitian right i mean uh, no typically it's of course a symmetric matrix but in general right you can think of r as coming from some expectation xx hermitian right if you have complex data mm, can even come like that typically we'll write it as xx transpose but i don't want to bring in real numbers as yet the images are all real so they, they definitely won't get complex entries and all but let's just keep it you know general right now the point is uh, okay which then which then actually means that you know we know that uh, we know that you know if a matrix is symmetric then of course its eigen values are real on top of this if it is a positive semi definite matrix right which is which is r 
right so then it then it also means that all your eigen values are basically greater than or equal to zero right these things you know now uh, now what you the what you can do next is so suppose it suppose suppose we do suppose we do a transformation right suppose i take my r suppose i multiply with some u and some uh, u hermitian and then in order to get an r dash okay now right this is let us say right any 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 sort of a unitary transform right i'm not saying that that this transform will will uh, you know will actually diagonalize r so saying suppose i applied a unitary transform that is u u hermitian as identity right is equal to u hermitian u and suppose i suppose i acted it on r okay then if you look at the frobenius norm of r dash suppose i suppose i look at the square of the frobenius norm right that will be trace of r dash hermitian r dash right so which will be trace of uh, r dash hermitian is what u r hermitian u hermitian and then r dash is u r u hermitian u hermitian u is identity therefore this is trace of u r hermitian r u hermitian and because of the fact that u is a unitary transform this will this can be shown that is equal to r hermitian r trace of which is nothing but norm of frobenius norm of frobenius norm square of r so 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 the point is this right so when you take a u and suppose you act it on a this one covariance matrix then irrespective of whatever happens whether you decorrelate or whether you whether you don't decorrelate we do not know or how much decorrelation do then the, then the fact is right whatever whatever is the norm in r dash right the same sort of an energy is also is also you know what was in r right is still intact in r dash except that there is a kind of a redistribution right now this now this redistribution right you want it in a manner that ideally you want you want your off diagonal elements to go to zero suppose r has off diagonal elements ideally if you want to decorrelate it means that your off diagonal elements should all go to zero and then the other thing right that you would like is you would like to pack as much energy as you can in the first few coefficients right along along the diagonal right you have the variances right along the diagonal and you would like to pack as much as you can in the first few coefficients right now now these are these are two properties that are kind of you know that are is defined in the following way what is called energy packing efficiency this is epe okay this stands for energy packing efficiency okay now from now on right this is all in terms of a covariance okay so this is all like like an ensemble property now epe of m that means if you take the first m coefficients and suppose you have done r dash is equal to you know u r u hermitian suppose you have done this then epe of m is given as i is equal to 1 to m by r dash i comma i okay from the divided by j equal to 1 to n okay all the way right of r dash j comma j right so so after after transformation right what do what, what can energy so you can also you can also do it for r right r i comma i and then r. so how many were were you know, initially packed in r in the first m coefficient now after you have done the transform right how is it changed now the other thing is decorrelation efficiency or decorrelation factor or decorrelation uh no what i think it's typically called decorrelation efficiency okay which is given as eta this is given as 1 minus alpha by beta where alpha is summation ah, summation i comma j equal to 1 to n mod r dash i j i not equal to j and beta is equal to summation i j equals 1 to n i not equal to j but this is taken over r okay so we'll so we'll follow this up in the next class